thanks again for visiting, Kelly. Appreciate it. Thanks uh, for having me. I think we're going to spend the next couple minutes and, and chat a little bit about the business and, mm -hmm. and hopefully get some insights from you. And I know you had a few questions for me, so uh, why don't we start? I am thinking of the renewable energy requirements that we hear about here. How important is that to customers? Now? Our facilities in Sacramento, mm -hmm. all three of them, offer 100% renewable energy which wow. to many of our customers is very, very important. Mm -hmm. um, they look to that, and when uh, Greenpeace and other organizations audit them, we're a key piece of their ability to offer a, a carbon neutral footprint. Uh, right. So it is something that our customers are very interested in. Um, great, so how much more renewable energy usage will we see? Are they all gonna go renewable at some point, do you think? or? Is it only for certain customers that care? That's a really good question. Yeah. I'd like to think at some point they will all go renewable. Mm. Um, certain markets, because of the Ford buys the power and where they get their power from, it's difficult, right? Right. And, and, and so you have to strike this commercial balance between what's, what's best for the environment and what's commercially reasonable. And so I think yeah. over time, yes. The question is, what's that horizon look like? Yeah. And so you know, we, we have what I like to think is the best of both worlds. We can provide green power to all customers in mm -hmm. all markets, um, but it depends, it's their choice whether they want to spend the extra money or not. And so what are the top characteristics of the Virginia market? The market's changed, we've yeah. changed as a company, um, our products changed significantly. Uh, and, and to answer your question, really what we've seen is the emergence of hyperscale within that market. Yeah. Hyperscale's taking dominance. Yep, that makes sense. And what about Silicon Valley? Similar pros and cons? or If you look at Santa Clara proper, which is really the jewel of Silicon Valley because the, right. the pricing of power is about 20 to 30 percent less, there's almost no supply in that market. Right. Um, I think, I'm hoping we're timing it right yeah. when we bring on our supply in 2020. Okay. And, and that building's kind of exciting because it's going to be our first seismic isolated data center in Silicon Valley. Right. And so okay. we're importing technology that NTT has used in Japan for many years for their data centers mm. and other buildings. So mm. we're excited. For peace of mind, I guess, for the earthquake yeah. risk. Yeah. yeah, the best solution is just to isolate the entire building. And so we believe that um, using this Japanese technology that we're gonna have a unique differentiator that frankly no one else will have in that market. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And what about, I know in places like Silicon Valley where you don't have a lot of land available, are people going to be starting to build up? It's a market where you just have to go vertical. There's yeah. not enough space available, the land's too precious, too expensive. Exactly. Um, and frankly, to do single story when that land's that expensive just doesn't make it cost effective for the customers. Yep. So. And we've seen that in other areas. We were talking before about how in Hong Kong, land is selling yeah. for between 20 million to 100 million an acre. Yeah. So they have to go up. It's 15 story data centers there. So we may start to see that more in Virginia and other areas where I the land is I think we're going really to, expensive. frankly. Our, our new V2 design that I mentioned yeah. earlier is 32 megawatts versus 60 megawatts. Mm. Almost the same floor plate. We're just doing two stories. Ah, okay. In Tokyo, for instance, or Osaka in Japan, the data centers that I've toured there, mm -hmm. I've gone through six, eight-story data centers that yeah. are built on less than an acre of land. That's amazing. And, yeah, that's and so, yeah, they're, they're, they're experts at it. They yeah. know how to do it. And yeah. that's part of the reason that, that we're so pleased to be part of this larger entity organization is mm. we have access to that knowledge capital and that, that IP, and they've done it. Right. So speaking of uh, Japan and Hong Kong, how much appetite is there from customers for global connectivity and global it's data huge. centers? Uh, we're able to deal with a much larger customer mm -hmm. and, and really handle their strategic business needs by giving them a global footprint of data centers. And of course, being part of NTT yeah. makes us part of one of the largest most financially stable companies globally. It eases any concerns they would have over financial concerns because a data center mm. business is a long-term relationship. It's not a yeah. you know, it's not a transaction, it's a 10-year relationship. Right. And they want to make sure that 10 years from now you're going to be able to grow, you're going to be able to afford to continue to provide them data center space. Sure. You're still going to be a business. And so mm. uh, all those issues that occurred prior to the transaction, off the table. No issues anymore. Yeah. Um, what markets do people mainly talk about wanting to be in? Tokyo, ah, okay. Hong Kong, Interesting. Frankfurt, yeah. Singapore, a lot of conversation about China now. Ah, and then of course, on top of the US markets, right? Everybody wants to be in Ashburn. Virginia. A lot yeah. of noise about Dallas, 
huge amount of interest in Silicon Valley. Okay. Uh, just about every customer you talk to is Want looking to have Valley. some level of presence in Silicon Valley. Oh, that's uh, and of course the other one I left out is, is UK. And then how important as part of that do the customers want sort of standardized designs and operations? Is that a benefit or do they kind of mix and match best of breed in each city or how do they? The designs are a little bit different depending on the country and, mm -hmm. and the company that, that, that produces the facility. Over time, mm. they've created a, what they call the NTT Next Center Standards. And so those Next Center Standards allow us to have more of a single design for the customers. Raging Wire and NTT and our brother and sister affiliate companies are moving towards a common MSA, a common SLA, mm -hmm. and uh, common security systems, common portals, so that we can provide a much more of a, a unified approach to our mm -hmm. customers. Um, in my five years, we've come a long way towards having a, a single product. Right, even unified contracts, that kind of thing, they're not easy across countries. That's the biggest countries. piece, by the way. That's yeah. what the kind of, it's the billing, it's yeah. the contracts, and it's the access to the data centers. Right. That oh, yes. really is, yeah. is, is uh, people looking for universal. Yep. Uh, I guess speaking of different types of customers, how do the designs differ these days for, say, large enterprises sure. versus hyperscale? The number one requirement in the market now for these large wholesale and these large uh, hyperscalers is, is speed to build. Uh, so you have to own the land in the market. What we do is we usually have prefabricated building that we build. Uh, okay. And then we build modules for the yep. mechanical and electrical within a factory. And then we merge them. Okay. And that allows us to build at a pace that frankly we, we haven't been able to in the past. But we stick build, yep. traditional building. It right. would take us you know, a year and a half to build a building. We've cut that time in half now. We're building in larger module sites. So where we used to sell customers two, four, eight megawatts, and that was a sizable opportunity, people are now buying 16 to 32 megawatts. They can be subdivided smaller than that, but we're finding that the larger customers want those size of vaults. How else have data centers become more cost efficient? It sounds like yeah. that's more about flexibility, but does that save in cost as well? Yeah. Larger vault sites are less expensive. Yeah. Uh, moving away from raised floor to slab on grade is less That's expensive. expensive. We're now using an N plus uh, one with swing system. So uh, okay. uh, it's still concurrently maintainable, still has, is still very fault tolerant. These larger customers that we engage with, if we engage early enough with them yeah. in the process, we have the ability to make change to the design uh, on the mechanical and the electrical side to reduce cost yeah, and give them a lower total cost of ownership. Right. The availability is amazing. Uh, yeah. We still get avail amazing availability, we're just doing it in, I think, a more efficient way. Right. That makes well, sense. so speaking of scale, with the hyperscalers, hyperscalers driving <laughs> this business so much, how big will they go? Do you think we'll start seeing 100 megawatt deployments? That's the question we're then? asking ourselves. Yeah. yeah is, is we're looking at our five-year roadmap, right. and frankly, I'm not going to say the size of the modules, but let's just say we're moving to a larger building over yeah. the next five years, because we do believe that's the case, and in the you know mm -hmm. the, the largest markets, places right. like Ashburn, Virginia. land is becoming more precious. Yeah, I, I never believed we'd be in a situation where I was looking beyond that 80 acres that we already own. Yeah, but we are, right. and it's because that land is becoming important. So it's causing people to go higher yep. and denser in their and designs. Denser. Okay, interesting. Um, I think those were actually all the questions I had. So it's great to catch up. Thanks, Kelly. I really Thank appreciate you. you spending the time. Thanks Always a pleasure to have you here. Uh, Great to I be look here. forward to hosting at one of our new data centers. As you know, we're building all across the country, and I think uh, hopefully next time we'll meet, it'll be in one of the new facilities. Yes, I hope so. Thank hey. you for having me. Thanks again. All right.